you all for coming. I appreciate you taking the time this afternoon to come and, and to listen to what we have to say. Last year, I put on hold the um, building of the transit stations along Columbia Pike. I did so because the Walter Reed prototype um, for those stations cost too much, took too long to build, and had some design problems that we needed to fix. This is a vital transit project for us. It'll encourage bus and eventually streetcar ridership along the pike. These stations will help achieve our community's vision for transforming Columbia Pike from a car-centric thoroughfare with strip malls to the next great Main Street, and it must be done right. I said we would not move forward with this very important transit project until we had identified what went wrong with the prototype and until I was satisfied that we could build the remaining 23 stations better, faster, and cheaper. In cooperation with WMATA, who managed the construction of the prototype, we launched a third-party review of the project management and conducted a financial review. Our goal was accountability to pinpoint what went wrong in the project management on the Superstop design, to account for how the money was spent, and to ensure that going forward, that we are now calling the transit stations, will be built efficiently and cost effectively. We have succeeded in both substantially improving the station design and cutting the cost by the one that will serve generations of Arlingtonians and others who use transit along the heavily traveled corridors, the most heavily traveled corridor in Virginia. The term transit station, by the way, is more accurately reflective of these stations. They're larger in capacity to shelters. They have elements like greater accessibility. They have safe lighting, real-time information, and the ability to serve both bus and streetcar. They are much more than a typical bus stop. Our, our, new design, our new design firm has produced a kit of parts, a transit station with a price tag far below the Walter Reed prototype and far below the original $20.8 million budgeted for 24 stations along Columbia Pike. Because of their modular design, these stations can be scaled up to accommodate more riders as demand increases and will cost less to maintain. We will retain elements of the prototype that riders told us they wanted and needed, such as good lighting and real-time arrival information. They remain architecturally true to the original concept they are aesthetically pleasing and enhance our efforts to create a sense of place as we transform the pike into a more modern, oriented main street, the more vibrant corridor that will better serve all who live, work, and visit the pike. Their amenities and designs will attract more riders to bus and later streetcar on the pike. We did not stop at producing a better design. We've also re-engineered our project management, and going forward, we will directly manage this project, rather than hiring WMATA to do it. Back when we first planned to upgrade the bus stops along the pike, it was common for us to use, as it was for other jurisdictions, to use Metro to build these larger transit infrastructure projects. Our capital maintenance staff now is robust enough and experienced to manage this project as we have managed others. One piece of this project still remains incomplete. The financial and program management review of the Superstar prototype has not been finalized. We already know, even before receiving the final reports, several factors contributed to the delays and the errors. Our community design process produced a design that was too customized and too costly. It took years to get the design approved by VDOT, which owned the Pike at that time. Once VDOT approved the design, we had our own internal permitting delays. And once the construction began, WMATA, the project management, 
was not able to be up to par on this project. The complexity of this project, it spanned nearly a decade and it involved three entities, the county, WMATA, and VDOT. This has made it difficult for consultants to reconstruct what exactly happened. The consultants are working to finalize these important reports, and I hope to report back to the board and the public on these findings once they are complete. I believe that the thoroughness of this effort is evidence of just how seriously we take our stewardship of taxpayer dollars. This is an extraordinary effort to address real concerns about the important infrastructure investment that cost too much and failed to deliver all that it had promised. This project is not representative of how Arlington manages infrastructure projects. We are proud of our track record. We deliver projects and stay within budget and perform up to standards. Across the county, you can see evidence of this. You saw it in the Water Pollution Control Plan, which is the largest capital project that we have ever done upwards to a half a billion dollars. We have improvements to the Rosalind Metro Station Elevator, and we have improvements right here in this Arlington County, Arlington Mill Community Center. We came in on budget, and many projects have been very, very successfully completed. Time and again, Arlington voters have supported the county's capital program by giving their overwhelming support to the bond measures that finance these programs. We are accountable to these voters, and I personally want to commit to them that these projects are and will be skillfully managed. We are ready to move forward. And with that, Dennis will now give you an overview of the next transit stations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to walk you through our county manager's recommendations on the Columbia Pike transit stations. First, the overview. We heard the community. We listened to the concerns and responded. We believe that we developed a better design. We substantially reduced the costs. And as the manager mentioned, we will be taking over the project management going forward from WMATA. And we will continue to leverage federal and state funding uh, for this very important program. First, a little bit about program costs. These two charts uh, illustrate what was in our approved fiscal 13 uh, capital improvement program for uh, Columbia Pike and the revision. So first, the approved. The program was identified as a $20.9 million program for 24 stations, including Walter Reed. The breakdown of funding was as follows. I realize it's a little hard to read, but you do have handouts. 38% uh, was federal funding, 24% was state funding, 33% was coming from our dedicated transportation capital fund, which is the commercial and industrial real estate tax, which can only be used for transportation purposes. And $1 million, or 5% of the program total, uh, was from local geo bonds. The proposal, we have the Walter Reed stop that we've evaluated. We have 23 more locations to go. The proposed program is priced at $12.4 million, and it continues to be uh, funded by a share of different funding sources, with the federal share of being 52%, the state share being 14%, uh, local transportation capital fund at 28%, and the GEO bond or the general obligation bond uh, at 6%. Want to touch on something the manager mentioned. It really ties back to the broader vision of what we're trying to achieve on Columbia Pike. This facility is part of it. When you look out the window at the construction on Columbia Pike, it's part of it. It's to create an improved, walkable, transit-oriented Main Street. That is the community center, or that is the community vision. Uh, with neighborhoods, including commercial 
zones linked by enhanced transit and, and creating a very walkable place. To the left was not very long ago, that's a couple years ago, at the giant shopping center near BART. Uh, mostly surface parking lots and strip retail. What's been built to the right is the direction that Columbia Pike is going, which is buildings that front on Columbia Pike, creating a high quality pedestrian environment uh, that is also good for transit. The county and the community has been at it a long time. The planning on the Cl Columbia Pike dates back more than 14 years. And as with all planning in Arlington, land use and transportation go together, not apart. So you can see on this slide, the transportation at the bottom, the whole notion of creating an enhanced transit service and facilities on the pike dates back to around 2004, which what is called the Pike Ride branded service. You can experience it out of this, outside this building. It uh, dramatically increased the service level and it began to create a local service, art service, to better connect the community and Columbia Pike to other places in Arlington. The Super Stops program, now called Transit Stations, is rooted in that package, dating back from 2004, to basically provide enhanced service and enhanced facilities. They go hand in hand. But as the manager mentioned, it took a long time, way too long. So the first Super Stop opened almost a decade later, and we do have to do better. But I think this notion that transportation and land use go hand in hand is part of what has made Arlington successful. And on, the, on Columbia Pike, we have been successful in building transit ridership. In fiscal 2004, when we launched the Pike Ride and restructured Metro Bus and introduced art, we were carrying 10,000 people a day, a weekday, on in 2014, we are approaching 18,000 riders a day. A tremendous increase. This is the highest bus ridership corridor in Virginia and one of the highest in the region outside of the district. And what does that mean in terms of the facility side? Arlington has a range of facilities that serve our transit pass passengers. We have flag stops, which really are for 10, 40 boardings a day. When you get up over 40 to 100, it requires a little bit more amenity. It requires some shelter, a bench, a trash receptacle. And then you can actually see the other end of the spectrum uh, with our Sherlington Transit Center, where we've created an intermodal transfer center with bathrooms, a commuter store, place to wait inside in a climate controlled environment. What we have on Columbia Pike is something in between. We have very high ridership. We can have 15 and 20 people waiting for transit in the morning and, and afternoon peaks. And that calls for a higher level of facilities. And some of those are listed here. Real time information is not a nice to have. What our riders tell us is essential. They really want, that's part of the service package. Good cover, a comfortable place to wait, uh, good weather protection are part of the package for these kind of intermediate investments. And Arlington isn't alone in looking at these types of facilities. Communities around the country are making these investments. These are just four, but there are many, many other communities. Eugene, Oregon, uh, their BRT station, a $445,000 investment per location. Hampton Roads, the, um, the Tide One station uh, at $762,000. Charlotte Light Rail, about three quarters of a million. Grand Rapids BRT in Michigan, $662,000. Our recommendation is actually at the lower end of the spectrum of what's being done nationally, but we think it's a very good investment. 
So the status of the review, and the manager touched on this. We have completed an extensive community feedback process. We have completed the design review process. And we are still working with WMATA to finalize the performance and financial review. The community feedback. Our goal was to listen to what the public had to say about the prototype and in turn to inform the design review. And it was important to survey actual users and residents and businesses along the pike. We had 732 completed surveys in English and Spanish. Five, we held five stakeholder work groups. And we also reviewed every email that came into the county on uh, the prototype. Of particular note is over 515 of those completed surveys actually used the Walter Reed stop. And what came out of that, that sur community survey work? What we heard from the community is that there were features that they liked and that there were features that they really wanted improved. So I'll start with what they liked or what they thought was working. Ease of boarding, longer platforms, higher curb, more open area to board and alight. The general accessibility, lighting, the appearance, electronic information, real-time information. What needed improvement? Really around weather protection and comfort. And yes, we did hear a number of comments that the costs were too high for the prototype, and we agree. Next to the design review, also very extensive. We reviewed the community feedback. There was a detailed analysis of the prototype design and function. So both the all the technical drawings, the specifications, the field performance. We had an interdepartmental work group that focused on the redesign with a consultant. The consultant team came up with multiple designs to look at meeting the community objectives. And we also looked at not just the initial cost, but actually what is the life cycle because these are intended to be investments for the next 30 years or more. So what's changed? We've improved, we've created better canopy coverage. It's probably the top of the list of things that people want to improve. Improve pedestrian uh, circulation. These are actually on the sidewalks of Columbia Pike. So it's not just people waiting for a bus, but it's also people walking through. Improved ADA accessibility. We need to be able to serve all users in an equitable manner. Better seating. And the concept includes a kit of parts, which allows it to be adaptable to different uh, conditions in terms of ridership and, and sight. What we kept, basic passenger amenities. The real-time information, the lighting, and the general design aesthetic. This shows the optimized design. It's, you have images in your packet, and you also have a model that you, I invite you to come up and look at afterwards. So just to highlight some of these features, the canopy has been redesigned to provide more coverage, uh, both from the elements above and the elements coming in at a diagonal if we have a windy day. We still have real-time information displays. And what we describe, these uh, facilities sit light on the land, which means less um, obstruction. So clear flow for the sidewalks. And now a comparison of features. The column uh, on the left is the Walter Reed prototype. The column in the middle is the recommendation, recommended concept. Canopy coverage increases. We've changed the height of the canopy and we've changed the angle. Those three things together mean much greater weather protection. Seating capacity. The prototype had four covered seats and three uncovered. The recommended standard size has six covered, 
so we've increased the covered seating. And probably more importantly, in the peak periods on Columbia Pike, the buses come every two or three minutes. So in many cases, people aren't interested in sitting. They are just wanting to get out of the elements while they wait for their bus coming in a few minutes. So stand, covered standing is a very important concept. In the prototype, we had 13 positions that were covered. In the, recommenda in the recommended um, station, we have 25 covered places for people to wait, including two handicap accessible spaces. How did we cut the cost? You know, that's a critical question. We simplified the design. It's modular, flexible, and can be scaled up or down depending on ridership and site conditions. The components are standard. The original prototype had very um, site uh, specific parts um, that were not as easy to replicate. We're using less structure. There's less steel in the revised design. We eliminated the ice melt system. And this program can be scaled if ridership continues to grow. Bottom line, these are cheaper to build and cheaper to maintain. So what is the cost of the revised design? The construction of the canopy, the amenities, and all the site work is $361,000 for the standard um, size. The standard size is meant to be comparable uh, with what was built as the prototype, although it has greater coverage area. These locations do require some additional site work, site design work, and project management, and that is included, uh, but the total of this investment is still under $500,000. We have also included a substantial contingency because we are early in the design process, so there's a 30% contingency in these numbers. And as we further design, we can reduce that contingency. So how are the costs distributed? But we heard about, like, we don't see where all that investment went. So we've broken it out to what's above ground, what you can see. Um, so the structure and the amenity elements are 192,000. But there is also a lot of supporting infrastructure. We're building 90 foot long raised platforms. That is a much larger area than a standard bus pad, which is generally about eight feet. Um, there's also running electrical service and other utilities um, to these that are part of that supporting infrastructure. And what about the program as a whole? Our current estimate to complete the 23 remaining uh, stations along Columbia Pike is $12.4 million. And I talked about being able to size these depending on the conditions. Our current recommendation is that nine locations merit a standard size. Eight locations, in many cases in the westbound direction, uh, actually could use a single because they're just, the ridership isn't the same as the eastbound. Um, there are also a couple locations that are very constrained. If you're familiar with uh, Cinnamon Draft House, you have a narrow sidewalk but our customers still want weather protection. And then there's also a few locations where there is really high ridership. And in those cases, they may merit three or four of these units together. And so again, the overall estimated program cost with a substantial contingency is $12.4 million. And uh, just to reiterate how uh, this is funded. We went from 20.9 for 24 to 12.4 for 23, and it continues to be a mix of federal, state, and dedicated local funding with a very small percentage of general obligation bond. In summary, we've cut the standard size station costs significantly. We've reduced the program cost by 40%. We believe that we have developed a better design that shelters far more people. 
as the manager mentioned, from here on out, we will be taking direct responsibility for the man management and execution of this program. We've incorporated the lessons learned, and we believe we have stayed true to the vision of Columbia Pike, making it a great pedestrian and transit-oriented Main Street for Arlington. What's next? We will work with WMATA to finalize the performance and financial uh, review and report the results. We will develop a phase plan to implement, to finish the design work and implement the 23 transit stations. And we will immediately go into design and then construction on the next date in consultation with the community. Thank you very much. All of this material is posted on the web and is available, I mean, there's very extensive, there's technical reports, uh, there's the, a full report on the community engagement process, and so you're welcome uh, to go on the web and actually review those as well.